You all stink of pee. It's simply intolerable. Who are you referring to? What? Yes, grandmother. My mother-in-law had a puzzled look on her face. I saw it as a wonderful chance and began to fight back against my mother-in-law. Ava Williams is my name. I am married and live in a family of three with my husband, James, and our only daughter, Emily. I am currently a full-time homemaker and do not work. Prior to marriage, I worked as an office worker for a small to medium-sized corporation. I consider myself really fortunate to have met James while working at that company. James, too, worked as an office worker. It didn't take us long to become friends. We used to go out for drinks with other co-workers, but as we got closer, we started going out just the two of us. I eventually began dating James, and we went on several dates together. Even though we hadn't discussed marriage yet, I found out I was pregnant with our daughter, Emily, as we grew closer. I was astonished to learn that I was pregnant. I told James about my pregnancy anxiously, and he proposed to me, saying, thank you, let's get married. Despite the unexpected sequence of events, I married James, and then our daughter Emily was born, adding to our joy. After I retired from my profession, I became a full-time housewife and Emily's mother. I'm proud to be Emily's mother, and I believe I put in more work than anyone else in raising her. Emily cried a lot at night when she was a newborn, leading me to sleep constantly. However, James noticed my suffering and volunteered to change Emily's diapers. I love Jane's proactive attitude and generosity toward raising children because I was fatigued from babysitting. I was grateful to have met James once more. Emily began attending daycare and I recognised how quickly she was maturing. Emily is now 12 years old. She is in sixth grade and her height has grown dramatically. Emily has recently been assisting with home tasks and she is developing into a sweet young lady. Isabella, Isabella, I felt joyful every day, surrounded by my loving spouse and children. However, James said something unexpected to me one day. Sorry, but my mother will be living with us beginning next week. What? Why? As soon as I heard James' comments, my face turned pale. That's because his mother is sarcastic and I couldn't stand her. It was unexpected that I would be moving in with her the next week. My mother has apparently been getting into disputes with her neighbours recently. She recently got into a heated disagreement with a store clerk. This is unusual, since it has never happened before. I'm wondering if she's lonely living alone and craves attention, which is why she's acting violently against people. Besides, we can't have her cause problems for the neighbours any longer. As a result, I decided that my mother should live with us. Please look after her, Ava. I nodded and replied, I see. If that's the case, that makes sense. I understand, even if I wasn't looking forward to it. I thought it was risky to leave her alone if she became hostile towards others as a result of her loneliness. I felt terrible for James' mother, who seemed to be going crazy from loneliness and decided I should help. Also, because she adores Emily, I assumed she would gain a lot from living with us. So time passed, and we began our lives with Jane's mother. She enjoyed Emily as I predicted, and seemed genuinely delighted when she spoke with her. Seeing her smile a lot, I had the impression that her loneliness had subsided and she had ceased making trouble, such as fighting with the neighbours. Perhaps she was acting violently toward others because she was lonely, as James predicted. Beginning our lives together may have filled a vacuum in her heart. Despite the fact that my mother-in-law appeared satisfied, her attitude toward me remained as severe as usual. My mother-in-law, on the other hand, has many disagreeable characteristics, so instead of being direct, she tends to lash out at me by criticising my chores. I had expected something like this, but she was merciless. She frowned at me one day, stating the rice I made was too firm. I was surprised and asked, really? Yes, you should give it a shot. My mother-in-law told me to taste the rice, 
but it was exactly as solid as normal. No, it isn't. However, she insisted, no, this rice is too hard. To be honest, I'm disgusted. How are you going to serve this to James and Emily? In a very loud voice, you're utterly unsuited to be a mother. Furthermore, it didn't appear that she was going to back down. So, thinking that softer rice might be preferable, I added water to the rice, cooker and cooked it again. To be honest, only my mother-in-law liked the softer rice. I sighed when I noticed James and Emily's subtle expressions. I had the impression that I was in charge, caught between my mother-in-law and my family. Furthermore, my mother-in-law questioned not just the hardness of the rice, but also the manner in which I washed the floor. Until today, I had only used a vacuum cleaner to clean the floors. Because unlike older vacuum cleaners, modern vacuum cleaners have an excellent ability to suck up dirt and dust. As a result, cleaning the floor with a vacuum cleaner was not a problem. However, my mother-in-law thought it was inappropriate that I was cleaning the floor with only a vacuum cleaner. So she irritably informed me about how she used to clean the floor. When I was younger, I used to wipe the floor with a mop before vacuuming. You, on the other hand, only use the vacuum cleaner without even washing the floor. You're not actually washing the floor. Change the way you clean the floor starting today. My mother-in-law was firm and nasty. Her boldness overpowered me, and I had no choice but to do as she ordered. To be honest, housework is more than just sweeping the floor, and the duty she assigned me was pretty taxing. I didn't want to start a fight by disagreeing with her techniques, so I reluctantly began cleaning the floor as she suggested. As I wiped the floor with a mop, I sighed. Emily suddenly yelled out to me, What's going on, Mom? It's unusual to see you mopping the floor. Emily was at home on a Saturday because there was no school. Actually, yes. So I told Emily about what had happened. Emily then offered to assist me with the floor cleaning. We were able to complete washing the floor earlier than expected thanks to Emily's assistance. My mother-in-law, on the other hand, made no attempt to assist us. I'm sitting on the living room sofa, watching television. I sighed once more as I noticed her sitting there. I'm envious of her easy life. That's what I thought as I looked at my mother-in-law, who was sitting on the couch, watching TV. If she's going to complain about how I clean the floor, she should at least show me how she wants it done, which would make her complaints more credible, I reasoned. She, on the other hand, did not. Instead, she simply complained and informed me that I would have to work out the improvements on my own, which was really off-putting. Despite the fact that Emily and I were hard at work cleaning the floor, she could just sit there and watch TV without a care in the world. I couldn't help but notice how cold and blatant she was, and I began to dislike her. Emily, on the other hand, went over to her grandmother and began a gentle discussion. What are you watching, Grandma? To be honest, my daughter's actions impressed me. I felt I couldn't be outdone. So I asked my mother-in-law, who was also asking what I was viewing. My mother-in-law, on the other hand, said something awful to us. You two stink. Don't ever talk to me again. Her yell rang out loudly in the main room. I was perplexed by what she meant and sought clarification. Do we have a sense of smell? What type of ida is it? What kind of ida? It smells like piss from both of you. It's intolerable. Her harsh remark completely surprised me. Huh. Who's Ida, you ask? Grandma, are you sure? My mother-in-law's face was expressionless. I saw this as a wonderful opportunity and began to fight back. You are the source of the pea scent. Is it time to change your diaper if you can smell it? Let's change your diaper, Grandma. My mother-in-law was surprised once more when we suggested it. Actually, my mother-in-law was in an accident a few days ago. She had somehow gotten the floor around the toilet wet. She appeared to have tried to hold it in till she got to the toilet, but was unable to do so in time. 
Emily and I initially thought it was a one-time occurrence, but after it happened a few more times, we recognized it was a significant problem. We managed to persuade my mother-in-law to start using diapers. My mother-in-law may have forgotten she was wearing diapers because they were so successful. Furthermore, because the diaper absorbed the urine silently, she may not have noticed she had an accident. I made this deduction, and given her previous nasty remark, everything seemed to add up. My mother-in-law, on the other hand, didn't seem to grasp what Emily and I were saying and just looked bewildered. Soon after, she became furious and yelled something unpleasant at us again. You mean I paid myself? What exactly are you all talking about? Are you making disparaging remarks about me? Incredibly, my mother-in-law refuted the valid statements made by Emily and me, instead playing the victim. Her remarks, on the other hand, struck me as strange. She cried so much out of shame the first time she wet herself. It was strange and frustrating that she made comments as if she had entirely forgotten how emotionally shaken she was. Even after Emily and I told her the facts and presented reasonable arguments, my mother-in-law refused to listen and persisted in portraying us as the villains. I eventually reached my breaking point and I couldn't help but yell at her. What are you talking about, mother-in-law? Please don't blame us since you're the only one here who smells like urine. Also, if you forget you were wet and are wearing a diaper, please check for yourself. Go to the restroom now, mother-in-law. Okay, all right. You're incredibly obnoxious. My mother-in-law obviously didn't think I was the sort to rant like that. She unwillingly went to the bathroom, feeling defeated by my power. Emily said to me while she was in the restroom, Grandma is being funny, isn't she? Even Emily, who was always kind, thought my mother-in-law's behavior was strange. I was responding when I heard a scream come from the bathroom. Oh, that's right. I'm wearing a diaper and have peed. What on earth is going on? Please come here fast, Ava. My mother-in-law was apparently surprised when she realized she was wearing a diaper and had wet herself in the bathroom. I brought an extra diaper and delivered it to her in the bathroom, preventing a disaster. I was afraid the panic would be too much for her. But then I reconsidered and was relieved because it was a good wake-up call. And my mother-in-law appeared to have changed her diaper successfully in the bathroom, so everything appeared to be fine. My mother-in-law emerged from the bathroom, looking completely defeated. Isn't that wonderful, mother-in-law? You must have felt rejuvenated after changing your diaper. My mother-in-law looked at me with a terrified expression as I made that statement. What do you mean fantastic? What exactly do you mean by refreshed? Do you believe I should have to wear diapers? You are a really cold person. You have no idea what I'm going through. I truly do not comprehend your emotions. As you can see, I am neither elderly nor frail and I am in good health. So it's only logical that I'm baffled by your current emotions, right? Are you starting a battle with me, your husband's mother, James? I still can't believe it. Why did James marry a nasty woman with such a horrible personality? You are equally evil, yet the world labels those like you as wicked. What? What are you on about? What portion of me is evil? You are quite impolite. I was astounded that my mother-in-law did not believe she was a bad person. There was no indication that she would change her incorrect opinion or attitude. I had no choice but to raise my voice at her once again. Do you get what I'm saying? When people use the word rude, they're referring to people like you. You're causing issues for our family. But I'm guessing you're not aware of this, are you? What are you on about? When was the last time I caused difficulty for your family? Don't say anything foolish. Really, don't you realize it yet? Mother-in-law, I am disappointed in you. You said the rice was too firm, didn't you? You should know better than anyone how incorrect that statement was. But the rice was tough. I didn't say anything inappropriate. I simply said the truth. 
What am I doing wrong? Don't get me wrong. As the dispute between my mother-in-law and me raged on with no end in sight, it was the gentle-hearted Emily who put an end to it. Grandma, before you came, our rice was never too hard. But since you arrived, the rice has turned into porridge, which neither I, my mother, nor my father enjoy. My mother-in-law was astounded to hear such an opinion from her cherished granddaughter, Emily. I hurled the last words at her. You seem to have forgotten about the diaper incident, so I'll remind you. It's not because the rice I made is tough. It's because your teeth are dentures. That's correct. My mother-in-law, in fact, wore dentures. She also had dentures before I married James. However, the mother-in-law in front of me seemed to have forgotten that she even had dentures. As a result, she couldn't adequately comprehend my statements and exclaimed, it's a lie. I can't possibly have dentures. It's a sham. You're fooling me. I'm certain of it. You evil woman. I sighed automatically when I noticed my mother-in-law snapping at me. Check your teeth in the bathroom mirror if you don't believe me. That should reveal who is telling the truth. Okay, I'll prove my point. In fact, I'm confident I'll win. Keep an eye on me, wicked woman. With that, my mother-in-law made her way to the bathroom with zeal. However, I heard her screaming from the restroom a few seconds later. I grabbed the denture adhesive and made my way to the bathroom where my mother-in-law was. What was the outcome? Isn't that what I said? My mother-in-law then responded hesitantly. As you mentioned, I am entirely dentured. I apologize for being disrespectful previously. My mother-in-law, who was absolutely down and depressed, truly apologized to me. My agitated heart felt rejuvenated to see her like that. I handed her the denture adhesive and stood there, watching her reattach her dentures. Denture adhesives have recently become light and efficient, so my mother-in-law may have forgotten she had dentures. My mother-in-law apologized to Emily as well when she returned to the living room. Emily, I apologize for shouting and being nasty to your mother earlier. Please forgive me. The gentle Emily then forgave her grandmother. It's all right, grandma. It's perfectly okay if you apologize appropriately. Thank you very much. Emily's kindness impacted my mother-in-law, who shed a few tears. It's all right, grandma. Let's watch TV together, Emily replied, taking her grandmother's hand in hers and walking her to the couch. Emily's gracious behavior toward her grandmother moved me. Children mature quickly, not just in appearance, but also in their words and deeds, which made me nostalgic. To counteract my want, I declared loudly, then I want to watch TV with you as well. That is acceptable. Let us all watch together. So Emily, my mother-in-law, and I spent some time together watching TV shows and giggling. It was a joyous time, and the mood was upbeat. Subs, however. My mother-in-law abruptly jumped up and shouted this to me. I know I urinated, and yet it smells. However, I don't believe it's totally my fault. What exactly do you mean? Ava, the floor in the corridor in front of your bathroom is filthy. So the pee odor that was attached to the floor was not cleaned, was it? You're foolish to blame everything on me. What kind of horrible person are you? And then, just like previously, my mother-in-law started blaming me again. Her emotional ups and downs are so powerful that I can't make sense of them. Is she the personification of a roller coaster? That can't be right. I've been cleaning the corridor in front of the restroom as you instructed. If you're still not convinced, I'll have you smell the floor. When I mentioned that, my mother-in-law apologized once more. Seriously, how many times will she say this? But, because I believed my mother-in-law's behavior was unusual, I decided to consult with James about it, to my surprise. James was perplexed by many facets of my mother-in-law's recent behavior. As a result, we decided to take her to the hospital. We explained to my mother-in-law 
that it was for a health checkup and managed to get her to the hospital despite her aversion to it. The battery of tests subjected her to reveal what was wrong with her body. Alzheimer's disease was the doctor's diagnosis. Simply described, it is dementia. But the frightening aspect of Alzheimer's is that it progresses gradually. During its course, symptoms include becoming suddenly agitated, incontinent and forgetful. Even after that, my mother-in-law's sickness progressed to the point where we had to admit her to a nursing facility. She was hesitant to move in, but she had no choice. Looking around at the empty house, I was surprised to feel both lonely and invigorated. Ike, James and Emily were able to spend delightful days in the house without my mother-in-law. In addition, James recently received a promotion at work, resulting in a raise in his compensation. There's even more excellent news. Emily received first place in a writing contest. As soon as we got the news, James and I, being the adoring parents that we are, began saying things like Emily could become a novelist in the future. Emily, on the other hand, stated that you are both exaggerating. It's not that simple, you understand. But thank you for the compliment, despite my appearance. Actually, I have some good news for you too as well. What's going on? They both looked at me with interest. I got a part-time job. I'm starting work in a bakery, so I'll be bringing home bread. That's incredible, Mom. Working in a bakery is quite fashionable. That's fantastic. Put in long hours at the bakery, sure thing. The main room was filled with laughter. I am overjoyed right now.